Okay, just the fact that you go to the gym, or the fact that most people go to the gym, they access the facility, and the receptionist asks them if they know what they're doing. Most of them will always say yes. But accessing the gym does not necessarily mean that you're doing your exercises properly. So we will go through the 10 exercises that are wrongly done in most gyms. As your coach Steve here, I'm dealing with another of my coaches here, Gavin. Gavin will be the model and I'll be the instructor. Good luck. Cases, people get their squat wrong. One of the things that we have to check, just one sec, Gavin. Now stand with your legs together. Together. Now if you look at this, if I push Gavin, he has no stability. Now stand with your legs shoulder with the part, knee slightly bent. Now if you look at that, I can put my own weight on it. You're only as strong, as stable as you are. Now, your strength is purely dependent on the width of your shoulder. Now you see that Gavin there is standing in that position, knees slightly bent, he's going to push his arms forward, now he's going to imagine that he's got a chair behind him. So all he's doing is going to more or less dislocate his hips and he's going to push it backwards. He's going to take a deep breath going down and breathe out coming up. Okay, Gav, let's go. Keep those arms forward and up. Keep those arms forward. Breathe in, going down, breathe out, coming up. Breathe in, going down, breathe out, coming up. Keep the arms forward. Breathe in, going down, breathe out, coming up. Now you see there, Gavin is coming down without having any roll in his lower back. If you've got heavy weights on top and your back is rolling, chances of you injuring your lumbar spine is very high. If your knees are collapsing inside, then it also means that your stand is wrong. When you're doing your squat properly, naturally, your heels should stay down, there should be no pain in your knees, and you should feel a nice, comfortable stretch in your glutes, all the way in your back, and all those. So that becomes exercise number one. Okay, Gavin? Avoid your knees rotating in, avoid your heels rotating, avoid rounding your back, and avoid falling forward into that. Okay? Second exercise. Second exercise here. Okay, Gavin, you take that position. Most people, when they do a push-up, now Gavin, we're gonna demonstrate here, you go down and your body is not stable, go down and come up. Most people, so now if you look, now, you're doing that properly. Just, just do it the way most people do. Okay. You'll find most people don't control your body. It falls down and comes up. Now, if you look at that, if you look at that from the side, you can see the body comes up and then the arms. But the best way to do this push-up is to lock this body. You keep this body nice and tight. The movement is only in your arms. And as you come up, you don't lock your elbows. Now breathe in, going down, and breathe out, coming up. One movement. The body moves as a unit. Ten of those. Breathe out as you come up. And if you're fit and strong, it's explosion. You breathe out as you come up faster. And if you're not strong enough, make sure that you keep your upper body going, but now go down on your knees, Gavin. Go down on your knees. You do not compromise on the upper body, uh, on your upper body here, because you want to make your upper body strong. You're increasing your upper body strength. So you don't compromise on form. Breathe in, going down. Same thing. But by making it less, then there's less stress, there's less weight that your upper body has to carry. Beautiful. Perfect. Lie on your back. The third exercise here is crunches. This is one of uh, the gym's favorite exercises. But most people you'll find, they put their hands behind their head. They tuck their, their chin into their, into their chest and they start tugging on their head. Let's do it the wrong way. Now, this is, this is dangerous. This is very dangerous for, for, for your spine because all he's doing is pulling on his head. So the easiest way to do it right here is, in most cases, put your hands right there on your ears, keep your chin neutral, look straight up, and breathe out as you come up. Breathe out there. It doesn't have to be all the way up. There. Ten crunches are better than a hundred crunches where you're hurting your back. You breathe out coming. Breathe out, coming up, breathe in, going down. Up, down. Beautiful. 
One of the wrongly performed exercises in most facilities is kettlebell swings. But before you can swing that way, it is important for you to understand the human physiology and the human anatomy. If you look at Gavin here, from the front, your body can be divided into three parts. You've got upper and lower. You've got left and right, and you've got front and back. That's the usual, that's how your body is divided into. So any kind of exercise that you engage in has to follow that pattern. You don't walk like this, you walk like that. The fact that I walk like this, straight away is left and right. They have to synchronize each other for me to move. You'll never see an Olympic run, 100 meter dash, running like this. They run like that. So when it comes to this exercise, those are the things that we have to factor in. You sit, whether you like it or not, at some point today, you're going to sit. So that divides your upper and lower. Other thing here is, whether you like it or not, at some point, you're going to turn and look backwards. And that divides your body into front and backwards. So there's no better exercise in terms of doing that than this. Now, if you look at the human body again, you can look beautiful from the front, but look shit from the back. But you'll never look great from the back and look shit from the front. Why? Because your biggest muscles are behind you. That's why we walk forward. We don't walk backwards. Now, your biggest, strongest muscle is your bum. You've never heard anybody say, I can't come to gym today because I tore my ass. No, it never happens. Because your bum can take up to 10 times your own body weight in terms of exercise. So if I can get your bum fit, and if I can build your, uh, uh, your bum muscle, if your glutes are strong, chances are your metabolism is high because your bum is 50% your metabolism. And trust me, nothing works your glutes better than you are kettlebell. So when it comes to this, we have to go through a very easy training system. The first one, before you can give somebody this exercise, you have to assess their flexibility. The first easiest exercise is a squat position. So you let them stand their feet shoulder width apart, Gavin, shoulder, feet shoulder width apart, wider than that slightly. Now push your bum backwards and get into a squat position, deep squat. I need your bum to be able to touch the handle, to be able to touch the handle of the kettlebell. Now in that position, it means that person is strong enough, fit enough, flexible enough to be able to snap, okay? Up. The second thing is you have to understand this is not a squat. This is a snap movement. It's a hinge movement. So it's a matter of they're not going here, but it's from this position where they have to snap the hips forward. So to take the person through the exercise, first thing, Gavin, take your thumbs, put them in your hip bone. In that position, bend your knees and push your hip bone as far as you can. All the way, you know, all the way. Hold it back. Where do you feel it? In my core. Yeah. So right there, it means your hamstring and your bum is activated. So from this position, snap it forward. Remember, it's a hinge. It's not a squat. So back and snap. So if I had to take that kettlebell and Gavin doesn't have hands and he had to cross his arms in front of him and I take, I take that weight and tie it around his waist, he should be able still to be able to snap it because if he can't snap it, it means he's lifting the weight. So to do that, number two, see that weight is behind there. Now let's imagine that's a hundred kilo weight. Majority of people, they sit too much during the day. And because they sit too much, it means their lower backs are too tight. So if he had to pick weight, now Gavin, move backwards, all the way backwards, all the way. Now, if you look at that from the side now, pick that weight. Now if he had to pick that weight in that position, you can see the stress is already here. He's been sitting the whole day, sleeping the whole night, sitting in his car. This one is already straight. Now to avoid this, the best thing for him to do is he has to take two steps forward and where that kettlebell is right behind him. The kettlebell is in top of his uh, glutes. So if he has to pick that weight now, let's pick that weight. To pick that weight in that position, he's picking it in a squat position. He's not using his back, he's using his legs. 
So if the weight is heavy, he's not going to injure his back. All that will happen is he won't lift it. So he's going to get into a sumo wrestling squat position. He'll come straight up. In that position, now we're going to snap that weight. From that position, arms relaxed. He's going to fix his eyes in one fixed point. Keep your chin up because your, your eyes, your head follows your eyes and your spine follows your head. So if he keeps on moving up and down, you feel a very big tightness in his lower back. And in that position, he's relaxed, pushing his bum backwards, he's going to snap that weight. Arms relaxed. Let's go 10 of those. Exhale, breathe out, without leaning backwards. He's staying straight, so it's forcing his bum to work. His heels are down nice and tight. Now even if I kick his bum here, my foot is bouncing off because that uh, bum is working. And this is what you need. Nothing works your bum better than this. Thank you, sir. Nothing works your bum better than that exercise. One of the most commonly used exercises in the gym is a leg press. As much as people try to use it to lose weight, but most people get the form wrong. Now let's watch Gavin's form here. One, we need, he has to be flat-footed because he has to use his quads to push it up. Number two, he has to keep his knees 90 degrees. Number three, he should not lift his lower back off the bench. Number four, you should not let the weight drop and then jack up because you don't only damage your spine but also your knees. Number five, you have to take a deep breath down and breathe out going up. Let's go. Pull-ups and chin-ups, also one of the most abused exercises in the gym. Number one, if you look at the way Gavin is doing it here, one, he has to hang where all the stress gets into his lats. Number two, bend your knees and cross your feet. Just that position alone. Now you take in a deep breath and pull as high as you can and control it down. Up, control it down. Constantly, you have to keep the stress in your life. Last one. Beautiful. Catch us next time when we take you through how to do a proper treadmill and all those other exercises in the gym. Yeah, 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 yeah.